Have you ever wanted to or needed to crimp one of these styles of connectors? Well, there's an easy way with a proper crimping tool or the hard way with a pair of pliers which is very time consuming, awkward and let's face it, a thorough pain in the ass. So today on the lab I've got a new tool to review. So let's have a look at that. Greetings, the Astro 30 here yet again, and I've got a crimp tool to look at today, as I just said in the intro. Made in China. Yeah, well, everything's made in China. Now, this particular crimp tool does those Japanese solderless terminals, or JST connectors, and it can also do various other types of connectors too, not just JST, including Molex. Um, and possibly those larger ones that I use from time to time. Well, I was going to cut it open with a knife, but there seems to be a convenient hole already here. So, I was on Evil Bay last week, and I was looking at, you know, uh, JST connector tools. Um, and this one I found for $24, roughly. Which is not bad. There was another one there for about 32. Um, but yes, yeah, this says hand tools, crimping press, and well, it shows what what types of other connectors it can do down the side here. So it can do the uh, female non-insulated crimps as well. But that's not what I bought it for. I just wanted to make my life a little bit easier. So. It doesn't actually say on here JST at all, but whatever. It's not even stapled, that's interesting. All right, so let's have a good look at the tool. This is a 0.1 to one millimeter um, uh, squared AWG 28 to 18, and it's an SNA-28B model. Um, and it's got a, a ratcheting, ratcheting system inside of it. However, I can't seem to figure out how you unlock the tool. Oh, hang on, there's a little... There we go. There's a little catch there. And it locks in. So you'd have to, like, flip this lever after you've um, crimped to release it. Alright. So, what I need is a JST connector the terminal itself and a stripped bit of wire. So I've got a JST crimp here and I've stripped off on this red wire about an eighth of an inch or three millimeters thereabouts. Now the JSTs would go in this first one, the 0.3 to 0.5 and can't see anything uh, uh, that you have to do special here. But you want to get this square in the tool. So I might get it to ratchets to start with. And then I'll pass with the female end of the connector facing out the back of the tool. Um, and this is very fiddly. It's not quite in properly. Bear with me, this is the first time I've used this tool. Right, that was what I was sort of going for. I wanted to get the flat part of where the insulation is crimped to the um, pin flat against the bottom part of the jaw with the U-shaped part pointing up into the top of the jaws. And it's just clicked into its first ratchet position. So if I now take my wire And 
we'll try and get it into the crimp without pushing the connector out. I believe that's in. Well, I can always waste one, but let's see what happens when I do that. It completely destroyed the crimp. Hmm. Well, that was unexpected. Okay, so I might have uh, had that in the tool wrong. I've left the actual connector part that goes into the pin sticking out the end of the tool. I've pre-put my wire in and let's see if that crimped without destroying the connector. It just destroyed the connector. Okay. Right, okay, this is just like really kind of frustrating at this point. Well, after wasting 20 odd crimps and cracking the shits and throwing the tool across the room, uh, I found that my wire was too thick, the insulation was too thick, um, and it kept on breaking the ends of the crimp off. It broke this one off, but it's still on there solid and that one's on there solid and that one didn't actually crimp properly at all because there's too much insulation now up into the connector so I'm going to try again I think I got it, it took a while and probably 30 of these bloody things but let's just check continuity between one end of the wire and the other I've spent probably 45 minutes doing this now and getting nowhere. I've just done the orange one. So I'll check that that's got continuity. Indeed. Yellow one I've already tested, but just to do it on camera. Brilliant. And this should now fit into the connector the correct way round. I want the orange wire first that's one and the yellow wire second so this is going to ponder the question if I was to use these connectors for audio wires there we go how would I um do it. Well, the audio cable's not that thick, but the ground lead might be an issue, which I might have to do that by hand without using the crimp. Um, although I might be able to get it to crimp, I'll have to test it. So, after wasting all of these bits of wire and these crimps and everything, like, look at them all. It's just, it was so frustrating. I finally come up with, well, a lead which will plug into a circuit board or well, should plug in just fine and we should have continuity from one end of the Z wire to the connector so in this case that should be the orange wire I would think my hands don't want to work There we go. And the next one. Yep, it's continuous. It's just that my um, soldering wasn't actually conducting. And it comes unplugged and it doesn't seem to pull the wires out of the connector so that's the main thing 
Right, after wasting all that time and effort on that, I'm just going to sweep all this junk into the bin. And what I want to find out now, is that without making this video super, super long, is I want to find out how well this tool is going to crimp uh, these type of uh, header connectors which I use for PCB pins. Because um, it looks like it'll fit in the tool just fine. So what I want to do is I need a piece of wire. Now I wasn't getting much success with the hookup wire I was using um, before. Uh, th this this stuff because it just wasn't working in the JST connectors correctly so I will try it with a PCB pin header because I need one for another project anyway I mean I could probably leave it in the band but I don't need to so now the goes up that way and this one looks like it's a lot easier to do because there's a lot more material sticking out the end however I don't think I'm going to get my wire in there so I might have to put that in first just to get it uh, started oh, this is hard work just squash those over a bit so it's I mean this is so fiddly and I'm not having fun I really am not So just to get that wire to behave itself and stay where it is, I'm going to squash the end part of the crimp over a bit just to hold it, the wire into there so it doesn't move around and behaves itself so I can get the bastard in the tool. Which I reckon go up there. See how it did. Well, I crimped it. I mean, it folded this over at a funny angle. See how it's at a funny angle, but uh, it is crimped. So what I need to do is just check the continuity of that wire. And um, yeah, I think we'll conclude this video here because this was such an annoyance. Yep, it's continuous. Okay, so this was kind of a, a, an annoying um, thing to do. It took me like over an hour just to, to get the crimp to work. And then I was having like a difficult time getting you know the the tool to work and it's supposed to make the job easier but it doesn't it's actually much more frustrating doing it this way than it was the other way so I don't know whether I'm going to use this tool or not but for what it cost and the fact that it, I threw it across the room already and these jaws got misaligned and then it took a bit to get them to go back into alignment I couldn't get these screws undone but um, once I uh, fixed that, uh, I eventually changed my gauge of wire that I was trying to put into these connectors and got it to function to a point. So am I happy? Uh, no, not really. Kind of annoyed. 
but that's what you get. So I might go off for a smoke now, but in the, in the meantime, I'm going to say if you want to buy one of these, just double check that it is designed for JST because they're very fiddly. But um, yeah, once I get used to using it, it might work out a lot better. The way you're supposed to use it is this part here, this part of the jaw is uh, where the flat side of your connector uh, lines up with. So if you look at this connector, the flat side is this side and the open end of the crimp is on that side. So the open end of the crimp goes up into this part of the jaw. And you put your connector in and you'll notice that it's got a slight step here. So where the step is, is where your wire comes out. So basically when you're using this tool, you're using it backwards. So where you're clamping the wire to the connector goes on this side of the tool. And you have it so that the end of the connector is hanging out, the bit with the little tab on it that clicks into the uh, plastic or the nylon um, retainer, the connector itself. And the uh, strain relief end of the wire goes on that side of the, the tool. So you have it in this way with the flat facing up towards you with the tool basically back to front. So you'd have it like that and you put your wire in through this way. So if you're right handed, you basically have to have the tool upside down and use your left hand to crimp it. And once you get your wire in there and it stops, you then just clamp it down until it releases and it should crimp it. Well, that's the idea anyway. And it may take a bit of practice to get used to and to do it right. But anyway, um, I'll leave that up to you whether you want to get one. I don't know how successful this tool is going to work out for me, but we'll soon find out. Anyway, I'm going to leave this video here because I've got to go start getting ready for work. Uh, but if you enjoyed it, please remember to go down below, rate, comment and subscribe if you haven't done so already. And I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.